Welcome back. Now that we have the knowledge of standard deviation, along with the other basic concept of statistics, we are ready to face one of the most confusing questions. What is the difference between process capability and process performance? Well, believe me, it is super simple if you go by the dictionary meaning of capability and performance. Let's give it a try. Little John has the capability of getting A plus in the mathematics, but as his performance is not good enough, he gets a C. Capability represents the best result that a process can deliver. Process performance, on the other hand, is what the process is actually delivering irrespective of all the variations. Process capability is a measure of fitness for purpose generally before approving a process. So while calculating process capability, we take samples from a small continuous batch so as to keep the sources of variation to a minimum. And process performance is used to monitor the actual overall output of the approved process. So we take multiple samples over a period of time with all the possible causes of variations like operator, material, tool wear out, machine running condition. Can you see the difference now? what the process is capable of and how the process is actually performing. Simple, right? In order to calculate process capability, we use two indices, CP and CPK. CP compares the standard variation to the maximum allowable tolerance or the customer specific requirement. It is calculated by dividing the difference of USL and LSL with plus and minus 3 sigma, that is 6 sigma. So if CP is 1, that means customer tolerance is equal to plus minus 3 sigma. And under best condition, 99.7% of the parts will be within the maximum tolerance range. Remember, area under the curve. If we reduce the spread, that is improve the process, value of sigma will decrease. So, CP will also increase. So, for a 5 sigma process, CP will be 1.67 and it will become 2 for a 6 sigma process. However, the problem with CP is that it is a function of process spread only and there is no impact of the process location. That means, CP for this process will be same as CP for this process, which is not good. So we have another indices, CPK, that also takes location of the process into account. If I split the inverted bell from mean, that is the top point, CPK is the minimum of lower capability index, that is mean minus LSL divided by sigma, and the upper capability index, that is USL minus mean divided by 3 sigma. And in this condition, my CPK is equal to CP. But if my process is offset, CPK will drop due to the change of location. Even if I move in the other direction, CPK being the minimum of upper and lower value will drop again. So, CPK can never be greater than CP. Also, if I move my process further, CPK can even become negative. So, once again, CP and CPK both are required to define the process capability, that is, the best a process can deliver. Similarly, PP and PPK are indices to measure the process performance. Basic calculation formulas for PP and PK remains the same as for CP and CPK. The only difference is calculation of sigma. Let me explain. If you remember the formula for calculating sigma from our last lesson, while calculating sigma C for a batch, the value of individual parts is taken as Xi, their average X bar is taken as mu, and the sample size is n. So my sigma c is a function of this particular batch only. 
while calculating sigma p, we take multiple samples from same process at different times. And now these x bars are taken as xi and the average of these x bars become x double bar which is taken as mu and in place of n we take k as the number of these subgroups. So my sigma p is a function of total variation and basically it tells me how the process is behaving over a period of time. Hmm. That's all for this lesson. Take your time to understand the difference and if you need any more clarification you can ask in the comments below. In the next video we will go through the control charts, a widely used tool for monitoring a process. See you there.